And we as Muslims, what an insult it is to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when we select a role model besides him, Allahu Akbar Kabir. So this is why we say that let us be careful. A lot of the young boys, they don't want to marry. And if you tell them why, they are looking for a certain shape. They are looking for a certain complexion. They are looking for a certain height. They are not worried whether that person has deen or no deen, religion or no religion, good character and conduct or no good character and conduct. They are not worried. They are worried when I walk down the streets of Colombo, people must look and say, he has a beautiful wife. This is what is happening sometimes. Then what happens? People will say that for five years. Chalo, for 10 years, they will say that. Then she begins to develop wrinkles on her face. Because beauty goes away. If you look at the outside beauty, it goes. But the internal beauty develops with the wrinkles. When you have the mother of your children, when she develops wrinkles and you have seen how steadfast she has been, and you have seen how much she has struggled and strived for your children and yourself, the more wrinkles she has, the more stretch marks she may have on her belly, the more she, she will be loved. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. But when it comes to external beauty of a person who has no internal beauty, as they grow old, they become ugly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So if we take a careful look at what I am saying, if we follow what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught, he says you want to marry, you look at the religious level of the person you want to marry. They should either be on your level or a little bit higher. That's a fact. The reason is, when you have children, you want your children to be spiritual to a great extent. How will they be spiritual if your own spouse is not spiritual? And it is more important for the female to have a higher spiritual level than the male because she is the one who is going to be spending more time with the children. May Allah grant us understanding. So when a man is looking for a wife, make sure you have someone who is on a higher spiritual level than you are or equal. Inshallah. Obviously, the hidden internal spirituality is only known by the Creator. But we can see the signs in a person, the conduct, take a look at their character, their conduct, talk to them, see how they communicate. Allahu Akbar. Such that when your spouse becomes angry, how do they react? How do they speak? Do they swear the biggest of swear words? If your husband or your wife happens to swear F's and B's, may Allah protect us. Your children will go right up to Z with those swear words. Yes, they will think up new swear words because that's a new generation. They progress as time passes. But if you, your concern is that, look, I would like my child to develop spiritually, then Islam teaches us that that will only happen if you yourself would like to change your spirituality upwards then your children will be able to also develop. Did you know that anyone whose parent is his or her role model has a far greater chance of success in life than those whose role models are someone else? Listen very carefully. I want to say it again. Anyone whose role model is one of the two parents has a far greater chance of success in this life than someone whose role model is someone else. And at the next level, your teacher, the one who teaches you, the one who has educated you, if those whose role models are those who taught them also stand a great chance of seeing and witnessing success. Because it is someone genuine, someone there. When it comes to the parent, someone who's there every day, you see their whole life and you live with them so you know their qualities because they are your role models you now want to be like them 24 7. when it comes to a role model who is on a television 
You don't see them living. You only know them for the moment they are on that program. But when they are living with you, you see everything. That is why we in Islam are taught that the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, the companions of the Prophet, have a level nobody else can reach. Because they were known as companions. They were in the company of the Prophet They spent time watching his 24-7 day. They knew how he did what he did. So they were, each one of them, superstars. Why? Because they lived with the superstar, the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is what made them companions. They were not just known as friends. Nowhere in the books of hadith will you find a description saying that those are the friends, meaning using the word friends over the word companions. They are known as companions. Because companionship is what develops a person. A person is known by the company he or she keeps. So each one of you, be careful whom you have befriended, whom you have allowed into your company. Not everyone who wants to be your friend should be allowed to be your friend. You need to vet that. And you need to, you need to literally use a strainer as we use to separate tea leaves from the tea we need to separate the good from the bad when it comes to our friends disassociate ourselves from those who are evil because if we have bad company even if we are good that bad company will brush off onto us because we have been guaranteed that by the quran and by the hadith of the prophet and this is why if you want your child to be married, or if you want to marry, look at the company of your spouse before you marry. What type of people does he or she mix with? That will give you an idea of what type of a person the, the person is. When you have fish in the sea, the fish of one type move together in a school. You will not find one whale, one small fish, one kingfish, one something else all together moving together no they are fish who have something in common they move together the same applies with us when you see a people moving in a group you know that they have something in common either they are on drugs together or either they go to the masjid together may allah protect us all so when looking for a spouse look at the friends of a spouse this is what will help you The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, you also need to look at the family. The family meaning, what type of people are they? What type of people are they? And he says that there are certain qualities that generally people look at. Some people look at the wealth. Some people look at the lineage, which is the family. Some people look at the beauty. And some people look at the religious level. Then he says, become successful by making the religious level the main deciding factor. What does that mean? That means it is not wrong to look at how good looking the girl is. It's not wrong. You can. But if she has no religion, then opt for someone else. You can compromise the first three things, but don't ever compromise the last thing. Some of the youngsters when I have spoken on this topic in the past, they've come to me and told me, so what do you mean we must marry someone whom we don't even like what they look like? I said, no, that's not true. The hadith says, look at everything. Consider everything, but your final deciding factor must be religion. For example, you find someone, they are not acceptable the way they portray themselves or maybe the way they look, according to your taste. But at the same time, their religious level is very high. We are not telling you to marry them, but we are telling you, you can get someone else who might look in your eyes a little bit better, but their religious level is similar to that. And if you continue hunting, you will find, subhanallah, you will find. And you should know that beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Some people might like a certain type of look, Whereas others might consider that not good looking. 
then you have what we consider extremely good looking others might consider it not good looking and do not let your deciding factor be the movie stars because you will be living in a constant dream and you will be losing and lacking contentment throughout your life even the movie stars when they have a child or two what happens you find a wrinkle or two a stretch mark or two may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding then sometimes they themselves also have to give it up they have to give it up so in islam we have a very broad understanding of what to look at and we are guided in the right light to say look try and make your decisions and make them correctly knowing that when you have based your decision on religion or on the level of character and conduct the spirituality of an individual that is bound to improve as the days pass but if it is based on wealth there is no guarantee that that is going to stay if it is based on looks there is no guarantee that that is going to stay and if it is based on anything else for example the dignity of a person allah can take away the dignity of anyone at any time if he so wishes may allah protect our dignity and may he grant us all a level of piety let me tell you younger folks something especially those of you that are looking to get married the approaches you've taken to find a spouse i will not spell out for you you already know and i already know the options you've considered, the conversations you've, you've had, the social interactions you've had are between you and Allah. I'm no one to judge. When you're looking for a spouse, it's okay to look for somebody that you're attracted to, that you find good looking, that you find their personality is nice and all of these other things. But don't forget the principles. The, you know, a, a few principles, if you can observe them, I think we can clean this process up. I didn't even talk about online matrimonials. You know why? Because the online, if, if you can observe these principles, it doesn't matter if you're looking for a spouse online or on site or on campus or on convention or on whatever. It doesn't matter. It's the matter of observing particular principles. Try to, try to live by some of this stuff and you'll see a lot of barakah in your own relationships. First of all, understand that the, for the guys, the girl you like is somebody's sister, is somebody's daughter, is the respect and honor of somebody's family. So when you're staring at her like that, just think about somebody staring at your sister like that. Just remind yourself of that. It's a, you know, just remember this is somebody's honor we're talking about. It's okay for you to see a glance and say, oh, oh I want to marry her. That was great. But one glance is good enough for you and you take the dignified approach. Then the, the second thing, of course, first of all, don't be a perv and walk around like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. don't do that. You know, that's not the kind of Islamic spirit we're trying to revive here. <laughs> you know, so that, that's one. But two, if you do find somebody interesting, take a, take a, a respectful approach. Take a, you know, there are formal chaperoned matrimonial type sessions. That's fine, at least as a chaperone present there. And if that's not the case, the best approach, honest to God, the best approach is an indirect one. The best approach is through a friend, through somebody, you know, a friend who has a sister who knows her, etc., etc. Try to be as indirect as possible. Because when you're direct, shaitan loves it. He just puts stuff in you and he puts stuff in her and the giggles start and the smiling and then the texting begins and then you're sharing, a, you know, then you're adding each other on Facebook and then you're calling each other late at night, then the Skype thing begins, then things get out of hand. Things take one step at a time and they just really get out of hand. Take as indirect an approach as possible. And you know, some people ask, well, how am I supposed to get to know the person? You can, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with getting to know the person, but get others involved. And so that's the other thing I want to attack today. It is, there's no harm in two families talking to each other. It is not too formal. Don't go crazy, they're getting engaged. It's just two people trying to talk in a respectful way. Don't turn it into something it's not. So families, you say, I don't want to tell my family, it's not that serious yet. Actually, that's the problem. You should tell your family even when it's not serious. And your family shouldn't get all crazy. We can't approach them, they might take it too seriously. It's not serious, it's just two families talking. That's how communication is supposed to happen. If you're not involved in it, they're gonna do it on their own anyway, you can't stop it. You don't think that stuff was happening when I was going to college in 1835? It was still happening. These are realities, we have to deal with reality instead of cursing it and yelling at it. It's not gonna 